us a child is born. O come, let us worship. The Android Psalm is Psalm 19, verses 1 to 6, found on page 351. Let us say this together. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. One day telleth another, and one night certifieth another. There is neither speech nor language, their voice cannot be heard. Yet their sound has gone out into all lands, and their words into the ends of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which cometh forth as a bridegroom out of his chamber, and rejoices as a giant to runs its course. It goeth forth from the uttermost part of the heaven, and runs about unto the end of it again, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was the beginning, is now and ever shall. World without end. Amen. The heavens heaven declare the glory of God, and the firmament <coughs> show of his hand. Let us pray together to call it for pure. Almighty God, under whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts we beseech thee. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace to the will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us, for thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only O Christ and the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Colette Epistle and Gospel for the second Sunday after Christmas are found beginning on page 113, together with the Old Testament reading. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, who has given us thy only begotten Son to take our nature upon him, and as at this time to be born of a pure virgin, Grant that we being regenerate, and made thy children by adoption and grace, may daily be renewed by thy Holy Spirit. Through the same our Lord Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth thee in the same Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the Old Testament lesson. <coughs> The Old Testament lesson is written in the 62nd chapter of the book of the prophet Isaiah, beginning at the 10th verse. Go through, go through the gates, prepare the way for the people, build up, build up the highway, clear it of stones, lift up a signal over the peoples. Behold, the Lord has proclaimed to the end of the earth. Say to the daughter of Zion, behold, your salvation comes. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. And they shall be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And you shall be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the Old Testament reading, we have Psalm 145, verses 8 to 13, on page 516. Page 516, Psalm 145, verses 8 to 13. If you remain seated... I invite you to say this together with me. 
The Lord is gracious and merciful, long-suffering and of great kindness. The Lord is loving unto all, and his mercies are over all his works. All thy works praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints give thanks unto thee. They show the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power. That thy power, thy glory, and the mightiness of thy kingdom might be known unto thee. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endures throughout all ages. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. The epistle is written in the fourth chapter of the epistle of St. Paul to the Colossians, beginning at the first verse. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Here ends the epistle. The gradual psalm is Psalm 110, verses 1 to 4, Psalm on page 477. Page 477, Psalm 110, verses 1 to 4. Let us stand and say this together. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, and I make thy enemies thy footstool. The Lord shall send the rod thy power to Zion. Be thou ruler, even in the midst among thy enemies. My people offer themselves willingly in the day of thy power, in the beauties of holiness, for the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth. The Lord swear and will not repent, thou art a priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with my spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is written in the first chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Beginning at the 18th verse. Glory be to thee, Lord. The birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When, as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away in privilege. But while he thought of these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord, by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. The Gospel of Christ. Praise Praise you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things, visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, because and not me, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy
Holy Ghost and the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under conscious life. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is saved by the cross. And I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I hope for the resurrection of the dead. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I want to start with two stories, stories from the Gospels that you've heard before. I will apologize because they are not Christmas stories, even though we are well and truly still in the midst of of the season of Christmas. There are no shepherds or angels or farmyard animals or stars in the night sky or babies in a manger. They're not Christmas stories, but they are stories that show us in very tangible ways, in very real ways, what Christmas is all about. And they say a lot about the radical difference that the birth of the story of Christ's birth makes in our lives. The first story is a story about a Canaanite woman, a descendant of those people who were displaced from their homes when Israel conquered the Promised Land more than a millennium before the time of Christ. She comes to Jesus, as you are familiar with the story, because her daughter is very seriously ill. She is desperate. She needs help. And she is so desperate for help that she barges into the small circle of disciples around Jesus to cry out for Jesus' assistance. But the disciples in Jesus agree. She is an intruder. She is an outsider. She is a foreigner. And she has no right to interrupt what they are doing. She has no right at all to ask for his help. She and her people and Jesus and his people have been ancient enemies, having fought each other on and off for more than a thousand years. But she is desperate. She doesn't care about any of the history. Her daughter is ill, and she has nowhere else to turn. But Jesus knows the rules. He knows what the law and what social conventions say. He knows that his mission is, as he says to her, to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, not to these forms. Her problems are not his problems, and his rules are not her rules, and he knows the rules. And rules are rules, even when they seem heartless. Jesus and his disciples agree. Send her away, they ask. Her. The second story also involves a woman, although in her case she does not come to Jesus voluntarily. She is dragged to Jesus and thrown down on the ground in front of him. She is undeniably, incontrovertibly guilty. She has been caught in the act of adultery. What has happened to the other person who was also caught in the act of adultery, the man, we do not know. Sadly, we are never told. But she has been caught and she has been dragged out into the public to be shamed, to be humiliated, to be terrorized. And as this terrified woman lies in the dust at his feet, fearing for her life, Jesus is asked by her accusers what they should do. But their question is not as sincere as we might imagine. It is an open and shut case. She was caught in the act, she, her guilt is unquestionable, and the law is perfectly clear. Her punishment is obvious. What do you say, Jesus is asked? 
But before he answers, we are told that he bends down to the ground. And with, he, with his finger, he writes in the dust. What he writes remains a mystery to us. We're never told. But when he finally answers the question, after an awkward pause, he invites them to carry out the punishment that the law demands. If they are convinced that she is guilty, then they really have no choice at all. Rules are rules. The law says that she must be stoned to death. That is, and that is exactly what they should do, Jesus suggests. And rules are rules, even when they seem heartless. So what goes through Jesus' mind when a poor, frightened Canaanite woman, terrified for her daughter, kneels in the ground, on the ground in front of him, and begs for Jesus' help? Does he think about the terrors that his own mother will face one day in the future when her child, her only begotten son, is arrested and beaten and crucified, publicly shamed and terrorized? Maybe he sees his mother's face in the face of this poor woman at his feet. And maybe he sees his mother's tears in her tears. And what goes through Jesus' mind when a terrified woman is thrown to the ground in front of him? Does he see his own mother's face in her terrified face and his own mother's tears in her tears? A mother who would have faced exactly the same kind of punishment had her betrothed husband not agreed to terminate the relationship quietly, who would have cowered in fear in the dust of the ground, waiting for the first stone to strike. Joseph had every right in the world to demand a different outcome. She was betrothed to him, and he knew that he was not the father of this child that she was expecting. Nature being what it is, there was no other explanation. Mary must have sinned. Her guilt would have been all these, at least to Joseph. Stories about an angel, stories about the, being the mother of the Messiah were too far-fetched to imagine, all too convenient to believe. Reason said that she had to be guilty. And the law said that she should be stoned. And rules are rules, even when they seem heartless. And Joseph should know the law, should, because as we are told by Matthew, he was a righteous man. He was a just man. And to be righteous required just one thing. To know the law and to obey the law. Even when it seemed heartless. I've always wondered whether Matthew is having a bit of fun with us in his gospel. Kind of putting it into the story to see if anyone is paying attention at all. A one man calling Joseph a righteous man, a just man. And in the very next breath, telling us that of Joseph's plan to disobey the law. His plan not to hold Mary to account for what could only be assumed was her sin. And instead planning to end the relation quietly in order to spare her life. Because the law was the law, and rules were rules. And Joseph chose in that moment not to obey the rules. And then Matthew ironically calls him a just man. Even though there was no justice, as far as the law was concerned, for letting the guilty go free. That's anarchy, not righteousness, not justice. Rules are rules. Whether it's a young woman in Nazareth speaking to her betrothed husband, or a Canaanite woman in Tyre and Sidon begging for her daughter, or a sinful woman in Jerusalem hoping not to be killed. Unless, of course, unless there's something that we don't know about God's rules. Unless there's something that we don't know about God's law. Something that we had to learn. And something, perhaps, that Jesus had to learn. Maybe something that he learned from his stepfather, his foster father, Joseph. Something about the place of compassion about being willing in love to step into another person's experience, to step into their shoes, to hear their struggles, to know their fears. 
That's what Joseph does for Mary. And that's what Jesus does for us. He enters into our experience in every possible way. He is born as one of us for all of us. Even for those of us who sin. Like you and me. He knows our struggles and our fears. And he does what we cannot do if we are to be forgiven our faults and our failings, our weaknesses and our sins. And when we start each and every relationship, when we start each and every conversation with the knowledge that he has done all of that for us, it becomes incredibly difficult to withhold compassion and to withhold forgiveness from others. When we start with the conviction that Christ has forgiven us, it becomes that much harder for us to throw the stones that we've been gripping in our hands all along, and maybe even gripping in our hearts. Now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost be ascribed to Almighty Majesty, honor, Lord, dominion, and power this day and forevermore. Amen. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, forever and ever. All that is in the heaven and the earth is thine. All things come of thee and of thy own. We offer this holy Eucharist for the praise and glory of Almighty God. We glad thanksgiving for the incarnation of the Word of God, God's Son and our Lord, born in human flesh, that all humanity might find life in him. In our prayer for God's people around the world, at this most holy time, let us pray, saying, Lord, in your mercy. By the good news of our salvation brought to Mary by the angel. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. By the mystery of the word made flesh. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. By the birth and time of the timeless Son of God. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. By the manifestation of the King of glory to the shepherds. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. By the submission of the Maker of the world to Mary and Joseph of Nazareth, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. By the revelation of God's love for all humanity in the gift of his Son, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Grant that the faithful may receive the incarnate Son, that his life might give life to all.
that his wisdom might enlighten all, and that his love might envelop all. Lord, in your mercy, Lord. Lord. grant that the sick may be raised up by his power, that the, the departed might rest in Christ, that the lonely and sorrowful might know his presence. Lord, in your mercy, Lord. grant that the kingdoms of this world might become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that all people might be transformed by his peace. Lord, in your mercy, Lord. for all who are diseased in body and mind, for the sick especially, Brian, Christopher, May, Lee, Ruth, Glenn, Eva, Gail, Griffin, Eleanor, Terry, Perry, Aiden, Lisa, Raelle, Marie, Hyas, Sheila, Paul, Mary, Alda, Kermit, Pam, Rayetta, Shauna, Jim, Helen, Joanne, Andrew, Michael, Fran, Tammy, Eric, Kenny, Sandra, Connie, Sarah and Kim, Amanda, Brenda, Aaron, Sam, Eleonora, Mar Martha, Hayden, Anthony, Lillian, Barbara, Joyce, Wade, Rose, Merriman, Kim, Vesta, Elaine, Jackie, Elsie, David, Pat. And for those who are responsible for their care, Lord, in thy mercy, Your Lord. for those who are lonely, fearful, or sorrowful, for the hungry and homeless, for those who face temptation, doubt, and despair, for all those who suffer from natural disaster, for prisoners and those suffering the enslavement of addiction, and for all those who are in need of God's grace in other ways. Courtney, Vanda, Bobby Joe, Georgia, Carol, Ethel, Sam, Mabel, Marilyn, Donna, Shirley, Kay, Charlie, Maria, Sheridan, Mackenzie, Jennifer, Mark, Kyler, Richard, Michael, Sean, Ashley, Carmel. Lord, in thy mercy, and for all the faithful departed, especially Colleen Williams, Roland Lord, Lee Marion Kane, Robert Stevenson, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, and Chris Adams. Rest eternal and grant unto them, O Lord. And that light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake. Our Holy Mediator and Advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity for your neighbors, and intend to lead the new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, and make you be kneeling upon your knees. <coughs> Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all things, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of his great mercy and promised forgiveness of sins, to all them with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul said. This is a true saying worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John says. If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, 
Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounded duty that we should at all times and all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, Creator and Preserver of all things. Because thou didst give Jesus Christ, thine only Son, be born as at this time for us, who by the operation of the Holy Spirit was made very man and substance of the Virgin Mary his mother, and that without spot of sin, to make us clean from all sin. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sin. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we thy humble servants with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee, in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life, and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy cause of the Mercy to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. <clears throat> and now as our Savior Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to sin. Our our Lord, Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be always with you. We do not presume to come to this side in the first place. Trust in our own righteousness. And in thy name, O we are not worthy so much as to gather at the cross of the people. But thou art the same Lord, whose property is always in our hearts. Grant us, therefore, the riches of the Lord, so that we can flesh and thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean for our own blood, and our souls washed with the most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and him. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ was given to you to preserve the body of the soul of the Lord. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ was given to you to preserve the body of the soul of the Lord. Of the Lord. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ is given to you to preserve the body of the soul of the last one. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ is given to you to preserve the body of the soul of the last one. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ is given to you to preserve the body of the soul of the last one. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ is given to you to preserve the body of the body of our Lord Jesus Christ will be given for you to preserve the body of the soul of the last to you. Take it into your hands that Christ died for you. Do not just your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty and ever living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food and the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of his mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people and are also heirs through a holy of thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And of all the word, yet the 
because he seeks to accept this our bounty to the service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our weaknesses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who would be the Holy Ghost to us, honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of Lord, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be among you and remain with you always. The Lord be with you. Let us go forth in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia.